Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're in Killigy here in Killarney. Now you may remember some of this because uh, Grave Visitations already has this place on his channel. So I'll link that down below. But I'm starting this video inside the Mortuary Chapel here in Killigy. And we're going to go out and have a look at some of the crypts and vaults and some headstones here as well. We are inside this Mortuary Chapel. Now, this church of Kilogy was built as a family mortuary chapel by Morris Hussey, um, late colonel in the army of King James II. Um, at his death in 1714, his body was born here by his four sons and buried at midnight by torchlight. So we've actually come up here late in the evening. It's starting to get dark, but I just thought we would uh, visit at this time of the day just to take a different look at it and see what it's like. Obviously, when we come out, it's a bit brighter, but it's still quite... You can see it there. It's getting dusk. Um, I think we'll start over here. We have a tombstone here, and it says, Here lie the remains of John J. Russell, M.D., a surgeon of the 36th Regiment, aged... Is it 49? 42, I think it is. Oh, 49. 42. Oh, sorry, 40, age 42, who died the 21st of July, 1849. Um, so that's an interesting headstone to start off. So you can just have a look there. You can see we have some vaults and some crypts as well. This is the, the mortuary chapel. We were just in there. But I think the first place I'll bring you to is this magnificent high cross. It is by far the tallest I have ever seen. And uh, it has an amazing backdrop to the gorgeous mountains here in Killarney. Now right in front of it is actually the vault and they reckon he wants to be buried looking over, I'm going to show you now, looking over the lake here in Killarney and these beautiful mountains and of course Muckross House and Abbey are down there and that was his choice that he wanted to be buried overlooking this beautiful place. Now, the strange part of that story is he is said to be buried sitting up. And we have yet to prove that, but we might be able to debunk the story. But this is this gorgeous high cross. Look at the size of it. You stand up beside that and we give him an idea of how high it is. What height are you? Five foot ten. So GV, Grave Visitations, is five foot ten. <laughs> and there's the cross. So you're tiny compared to it. Wow. Uh, there was also a story about this was part paid for. And they brought it here. And they didn't pay the rest of the bill. But they left it here because it was so... Um, it was so huge, they couldn't, you know, to, to get it back out of here again, um, it was going to take too much time, too much money and too much effort. It's definitely the biggest Celtic cross in Ireland. It has to be the biggest Celtic cross in Ireland. So all you uh, that love and have often commented about the Irish Celtic cross, that is one that um, I don't think anyone will ever better anyway, will they? No. It is absolutely fantastic. So, let's Henry. see. Henry Arthur Herbert. I'm just going to give us a quick turnaround of what we're looking at here. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I actually wrote on this, in affection, in affectionate memory of the Right Honourable Henry Arthur Herbert. Born 1815, died 1866. His tenetry have erected this cross 
to record their immense, or sorry, their sense of virtue and their grief for his loss. So Henry Arthur Herbert, it's absolutely amazing. Kind of broken there. The size of it, yeah, there's a little piece coming away from it just there at the corner. But I mean, it's absolutely huge. Now I'm going to read a few headstones. Um, I'm just going to pick out a few because it is getting dark. Lovely rails here as well, look at that. They're beautiful, unfortunately the cross is broken. In memory of William Douglas um, of Dublin who died at Muckras, 1888, age 54. It's a small grave, isn't it? <coughs> Beautiful. You can see the lovely, uh, the colours of them. Um, oh, I wonder where they have come from. They're like a fresh little bouquet of, um, they're not fresh though, are they? Or are they? They look like they're fresh. Gosh, they are. I wonder where they were. They must have blown from here somewhere. They are gorgeous. Look at those. We we'll leave them in the middle. I'm not sure who owns them, but they're near to whoever of the three. Uh, we have Hillard, a Reverend Canon Christopher. Um, 1980, age 76. Richard H. Hillard, 1892 to 1978. And Raymond Frank Hayes. 1997 so somebody has visited them recently enough now there was quite a big hill walking you know you have to come up this hill to be up here because you can see we are up really really high we have two similar headstones here arthur rose vincent cbe 1876 to 1956 and derry vincent 1896 to 1988 arthur william born vincent 1919 to 2012 elizabeth uh, martha maybe or M maybe martha vincent 1921 to 2021 they both have the same symbol on top of the headstone probably a, a family crest vincent being the surname um there's one actually right here at the back and we'll go between the stones to get to it all on its own just be careful as we go down the slope here. John Ogilvy Vincent. So Vincent liked the headstones we've just read. Eldest son of Berkeley and Kitty Vincent, born at Muckras Abbey. GV has uh, Grave Visitations has a video coming up on Muckras Abbey. Um, so this, this place is connected to it. Uh, the 24th of March 1911 and died there the 1st of May 1914. So only three. Three years old. Yeah. So John was only three. That's very, very sad. Little sad headstone. But uh, in such a, a beautiful setting. You can see the mountain line the whole way around. And actually as the, the sun is setting, it's given off these beautiful colours to the grass. But then everything is very, very green here in Ireland. Right, so where will we start? Um, I'm kind of drawn to this one in front of the high cross. Oh, it's full of water down there. Won't be going down there, I don't think. But this one here. And the story does say that he is Jesus, look at that. I can hear my voice straight away, the, the echo. Um, it's massive. So, oh, right. I think what I will do is stop the video because I can see those steps are going to be slippy. So I'll get back to you when we're down. Right, we have, we have just come down these steps. You can see how steep they are. But I'm going to try and give you a glimpse in. Just there. 
you will see two coffins, one there and one kind of directly beside it. All right, so there's one just there. There's another one which I can't really show you very well. One there. And what's over here is actually just empty shelving. Nothing there at all. Just those, you can see those shelves there, they're all empty. But this man is supposed to be buried under here in um, a coffin sitting up. But we can clearly debunk that and say that he's definitely not, is he? And the other one is there. The rest of the shelves are actually empty. Every time I try to zoom in for you, um, it just doesn't want to really... There you are, that's the best view you're going to get, isn't it? So I think the strange thing about this vault is uh, the only name that's on the cross is His. Arthur Herbert. Yeah. So who's the other coffin then, if there's no name? I don't know, unless he had a wife or something. And why are all those shelves empty? Why is there candles on the ground like somebody was... They to me look like candles. There, one big one there. Hmm. But that's it, guys. Two coffins, one and that brown one there. They would have all, of course, been lead lined. But um, I'm going to go back up and I'll turn you back on then. Right, so we have made it back up and we've closed the gate. Um, so, yeah, I think we've debunked. The whole theory that he's buried in a um, sitting up position because that's just a normal coffin. This is another fantastic vault. But unfortunately, you can see down there, um, it's completely flooded, unfortunately. So it's going to be a mess. So I'm not even going to chance that one. Um, another beautiful vault, though. Right, let's keep going. We're not going to stay long. As I said, this video has already been done. But when we were in the area, we decided we'd come up and have a, a little look. Another massive vault here, actually. That is huge has lost the top. This could be in the same con condition. This could also be flooded. Yeah, and there's the top of the... That vault is down on the... You might just see it there. It's down on the, the ground there. Beautiful door. Absolutely stunning. We've actually another one right beside it. These don't have the gates. No, there's no gates on these ones. Look at the green door. You see that? Look at that. John Leahy. John Leahy, yeah. QC. 1866, is it? Yeah. That is cool. I wonder will we chance, which one will we chance? Um, whichever one's the driest looking. At this one I think is the driest. There's a lot of leaves down here, so we might be able to get some sort of a look in. Once again, I'm going to pause the video. I don't want to fall and I'll put you back on when we get down there. Right, to the right, there is a coffin. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to show you an awful lot. You might just see it through the bars there. Um, it's because it's kind of on a slant. And then the, the phone will always focus on the nearest thing, which is kind of cobwebs and stuff. That is one of the, the coffins just there. There it is. Just there. It's actually broken. And there's actually another one. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure I'm rec recording there or not. I think I am. I don't know whether you'll see anything there. Might not see anything at all, but it'd be just worth to see it in edit. Maybe you did. Um, so that's the inside of this one. 
Um, as I said, there are little slits on the doors. This is a vault of 1866, a John Leahy. Right, we're going to go back up the steps again, guys. Right, so these are the steps that we have to climb. And uh, it is quite hard. And people do be giving out, don't they? Yeah. Oh, you're puffing and panting too, right? We are. We're climbing up. It's not an easy job. We're climbing up hills and mountains and up and down into these awkward areas. A pair of wellies on us, a pair of slippers I was going to say. It's easier. A pair of it's sneakers. Easier when you're watching from your TV. Yeah, me. but we do love doing this. Um, in loving memory. Oh, this tomb was erected by William Maybury. Um, 1821, I can hear a bumblebee. It's time of the year now that's to come out. Actually, last time you were here, uh, there was a bumblebee. Arthur Herbert's yeah. fault, there was a bumblebee. There's a bumblebee following us. Now, there was actually um, plenty of paranormal groups um, have been actually up here. There was actually talks of um, satanic rituals being held in there. Friends, and I just wonder if, um, do you know, um, when you see candles in tombs, is it a sign that somebody has held some sort of ritual in there? Whoa, you just wouldn't know. Gosh, look at this one. This one is ancient. Well, at least, look, ah, look at that. Look at the door, yeah. Yeah, ah, it's a tiny little door. I kind of love these ones. That thing is, looks like it's open. Yeah, but I think it could be... Well, I hope it's welded shut. We're after finding tight, maybe. so many of these like you wouldn't believe. Um, I don't know whether you'll see anything in there. This one is only a little short distance. Oh, no, actually, will we? <laughs> I don't know whether we'll see it. And we're standing on what's very, very squidgy stuff. There is actually coffins just right there. Oh, it's, is it one or two? I can see there, look. That's pretty clear, isn't it? I think it's just one, is it? There might be another one I can't see. Maybe just one, yeah? Yeah. One coffin. Wait, let's just zoom in a small bit. Let's see if I can just get some sort of a clearer shot there. Yeah. This looks, actually, this coffin looks like it's um, fallen to one side, maybe. Oh, Lord, it has. It's actually turned right over. You see that? Yeah. Oh, that's sad, isn't it? There, the handles of the coffin. You wonder how they fall off. Oh, I don't know. Unless the ground gives away. Um, no I mean, it is literally just in. And I don't see any other one. Only that one there. But uh, that door, like. That's just completely. That is actually rusted. I can't even close it, but it's not. It's not budging, thankfully. Um, gosh, the leaves there are squidgy. Squelchy, yuck. Make compost out of that. I've just noticed this tomb here behind you. Look at that. It's like somebody has almost... How does that happen? That's strange. I haven't seen that in the graveyard cemetery. Do you know what I think it is? See the way the tree is? Oh, yeah, the nature. Has it kind of lifted it and pushed it? That's just a small little uh, tomb. There's nothing that people are actually in under the... The ground there. There's actually no writing even on that. I'm out of breath. I'll have to take my inhaler. I'll wait till I get back to the car. Um, let's see. I don't know what that is. That looks like it was, I don't know. Oh, a big tree, is it? A tree, yeah. Oh yeah. It looked to me like it was a tombstone. Completely covered there for a second. These are the real old ones. We're after finding oh loads of these on our travels this weekend. Loads. Kerry is actually full of them. Um I don't see a name on this at all. That's what I'm just thinking. Maybe the markers are belonging to it. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything 
on it bar those markers, but no names or anything, is there? Uh, here. Is your name on it? Oh, there yeah. is kind of, yeah. Well, we're trying to read it. Now, we're not standing on anyone's grave. We're, just trying to we're clean. cleaning the plaque that is actually, to me, looks like it's upside down. God, that's a lot of writing, isn't it? Wait, let's see if we can twist the gimbal around. It's 1816, something officer. It says something honoured. Honoured the army at something there. Let's just try and clean this bit. Officer. An early age. Field officer, look. Yeah, but it says army at an early age. He, so, he entered the army at an early age and died field officer. Honoured the, the army James at something. an early age and died a field officer um, on the 8th of July 1813. Okay, hold on now. So this actually says he had none. Look at, hold on, start from the beginning. Do you have a look here, look? says James, there's his name, James. James McGrath, he had, is it none? Friends, it says, friends he had, none. Something by his family. None deserted. By his family. Oh my God. What does that mean? So his family Desert. didn't want anything to do with him. So James McGrath, sorry guys, I have to get this into my head. James McGrath. Friend, he had none, deserted by his family. He entered the army at an early age and died a field officer, July, 8th, 8th July, 1815. And what does it say underneath it? Uh, oh, he, the, uh, something army, I'd say he served, served in the in army. The army. Uh, uh, country. Years, it says there, something. Served in the army for so many years. Keep his his king is it? It is. It's his king and his country. King and his country. And served his king and his country and loved his his country. Served his king and loved his country. Now, guys, we're not being disrespectful. This is just us cleaning off this so we can read it. It's not. This it. man is in this vault. Um, and the plaque has come down from this is just a plaque so this is James McGrath and it basically says he had no friends his family deserted him but he went on to be in the army from an early age here, um, he died a field officer and then it says something about he served the he served in the army and God um, and loved his king honored his king and loved his country. I think I got to get a couple of old leaves to try and clean the, oh, yeah. the, the rest of it, yeah, because that's interesting. To right. See. We're going to see if we can find something just to try and, I don't know, see, we don't have that with us. We've left the car, it's ages, miles away nearly, because um, you have to climb up this long, big path. But that is very, very interesting. I'm quite sad that it's there. But once again, no disrespect to, we're not walking on headstones. That's a, a plaque. Um, and we just want to read it. We have another vault here. So while Grey Visitations is going to try and clean off that plaque so we can read it properly, um, we have this vault here. We're going to take a peep in. Remember, anybody that is in here are just vessels, just remains. There are actually skull remains in here, bones, bits of broken coffin. Um, I'm going to zoom in for a few of you that request a closer look. That's it, guys. Um, I mean, it's life and it's death. And that's exactly what it is. Um, and it's unfortunate, but I keep saying it and I've said it a million times. They are just vessels. Their souls are gone to the Lord. And uh, they are at peace. And it is always sad to see them like that, but this is very rural Ireland here, and 
I mean, I've shared other videos where if family don't look after, sorry, now I have you zoomed in right in. If family don't uh, look after I've never seen this in my life. their graves, then, you know, there is nobody that can. Um, so have you, There's something even more I'm out of breath now because I've been this. stooping and mending. It actually says on the top of the stone plate, here lie the bones. Stop. I've never seen that before. Here lie the bones. I think we have. Right, so this, we believe this is the plaque of the, uh, the vault here. It's not a headstone anyway. So will you read it? Yeah. Please. So here lies the bones, it says, of James McGrath. Friends he had none. Deserted by his family. He entered the army at an early age and died a field officer on the 8th of July. 18, 15, we believed it might be there, or 13. Um, he served in the army. Um, How many years? Is it, I think it could be 13, 13 think. years. He feared God, honoured his king, and loved his country. The above inscription, written by himself, and found among his papers after his death. Um, Something is placed, is placed here by his by son. His son. Um, it's hard to know what that is. McGrath, J. L. McGrath. Of Killan. J. L. McGrath. So, he, do you know, oh. that's, now it doesn't make sense to me because he obviously he obviously um we'll have to look him up and see there might be a record he obviously married and had a child or at least had a child maybe out of wedlock but his son obviously came and wrote this after he finds it in papers personal papers on uh him, james himself it is james isn't it Did james planned this inscription yes like he knew he was so going james to wrote this inscription yeah and his son found his papers and then wrote it on a plaque. And honoured his wish. And honoured his wish. Wow, that's... Amazing. That is like seeing into the future nearly, isn't it? That he foretold. In the army, he probably told. But you know something as well? <laughs> Not only that, right? But he admitted he had no friends and his family had deserted him. That is sad. But he felt so strongly about it that he wrote it on his uh, plaque. Yeah, when you think had, about it. He had that one son then, I suppose, that... Cared enough, had the maybe? one son that cared enough. You know, his love never died for his father. Mm. Like, maybe the rest of them, I don't know what happened, but... Um, it's interesting that... Wow. So um, this, you know, we, you never know what you will find when you search places like this. Uh, we came up here for a walk and a view of the scenery, and we said, you know something... We'll do a quick video here because the lighting is, is so it's so nice here. And we find James McGrath and thanks that Grave plan. Visitations for cleaning it up for us. I'd say it was there on the tomb. If that wasn't heavy enough, I would love to lift it up. And yeah, there's not up, a hope you're going to put it your, up properly. You put your back out here and I am not calling <laughs> the Coast Guard. I just feel like that when I see <laughs> things like that. I'd love to just lift it up. I know that, but we can't unfortunately. And do you know something? There's a lot of places in here that aren't being very well cared for, including this vault here that we have human remains in. James we have not James has not forgotten. We have human remains in here, which is quite sad. But like I've said it, and I said it again in the video, it happens, guys. This is uh, life after death, I suppose you could say it. There's that beautiful uh, mortuary chapel. I'm just going to show you that we have lots and lots and lots of field markers here. Lots of wild garlic growing and surrounded by these rolling hills. And do you know something? Maybe this was faith. Maybe we were to come here tonight because we hemmed and hawed on it. We are extremely tired. We've been driving for the last three days and all we want to do now is go to sleep. But we decided we'd make the journey up here. And that is why I'm a true believer in that. And whatever it is, like, because I've done a video here, but I have never seen that. We've never seen that before. But, like, you can see the way it was when we found it was completely covered in muck and, and moss. Yeah. But whatever it was just caught, it caught my eye, and I just said to myself, I have to look at that or yeah, clean it or yeah. something. Like, do you know something? Um, 
like cause sometimes our videos are not about um do you know a big story or anything else and yet you find the most unique uh you know headstones memorials vaults crypts whatever that to me is the most interesting find that we have found in a long time and um, i'm glad you found it now uh, but I think I am going to end the video here. We are exhausted. Uh, this was kind of a bit of a, um, what would you call it? A bit of an adventure and a bit all over the place. So apologies for that. But there is, I'm just going to give you the last view because the clouds have lifted off the mountains. And I think we'll end the video then with you looking at this beautiful landscape. Uh, but for now, guys, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Myself and Grave Visitations both do Irish cemeteries. We have also been to England, of course, and we will be going back. But look at the countryside that we are looking at right Amazing. now. You don't get better than this really, do you? Stunning views. Yeah, don't forget to uh, comment down below, guys, what do you think of um, James McGrath there, or the man that was supposed to be buried, sitting up in his coffin to overlook beautiful Kerry. Um, and it is actually, you know something, if you were to be laid to rest here, wouldn't you be doing all right? You can't get any closer to heaven, can you? This is the Kingdom of Ireland. You are looking at the Kingdom of Ireland. This is heaven on earth. So guys, I'm going to leave it there. Take care. I'm worn out. <laughs> Take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you all again soon.